Um, I've got articles that, uh, of impeachment ready to go. Uh, look, I, I think that Joe Biden has committed impeachable offenses. I've said that many times. But at the end of the day, when you're in the House of Representatives, it's a matter of getting to 218 votes. Right. And, and right now, it doesn't appear those votes are there. How's this for a plot twist? Marjorie Taylor Greene's renewed call to impeach President Biden is being shut down on live TV by none other than the Grand Inquisitor of the Biden impeachment inquiry himself, James Comer. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bell before you go. All right, friends, this is fascinating. This is not a plot twist I could have possibly predicted, even with this chaotic and dysfunctional House Republican conference. We've got a couple of clips to play. As a reminder, Marjorie Taylor Greene is not handling the fact that her cult leader, Donald Trump, is now a convicted felon. And so she's scrambling for something to stick it to the Dems, to own the libs somehow. And so she's renewing her public call to impeach President Biden. I'm going to play a clip in which she makes the case. And then we're going to talk about who shuts it down and where he shut it down. Fascinating stuff. But this is MTG. Where are we going to impeach Joe Biden? And that's what I'm planning to talk about at the conference tomorrow. Um, I've got articles that, uh, of impeachment ready to go, privilege resolution. I'm happy to force everyone up here to vote because that's what we should be doing. She says, listen, I am happy to force people to vote on whether or not to impeach President Biden. That's what a privilege resolution would be. It would force a vote, okay? And she says, I've drafted articles of impeachment, which she's done, by the way, multiple times. She drafted articles of impeachment against President Biden quite literally on his first day on the job. She's done it multiple times. She's drafted more articles of impeachment against President Biden than I think any other type of bill. That's been her sole focus in life. And again, she's scrambling. She's desperate. She's like she feels that Donald Trump has been politically wounded. Recent polls indicate that that is true. So she wants to stick it to Biden somehow. And she's trying to pressure Republican Speaker Mike Johnson, whom she also recently tried to remove from his position. Right now, she's going to him hat in hand and saying, listen, we need to impeach the president. No doubt she will threaten Mike Johnson as well if he refuses to comply. Mike Johnson's in a hard place. Now, of course, before I play you this clip, I want you to consider that if Marjorie Taylor Greene were successful, it would force 18 incumbent House Republicans who operate in districts won by President Biden in 2020, it would put them between a rock and a hard place, right? The House of Representatives only has a one-seat majority. 18 Republicans going into an election year are in swing districts, right? The people who voted for Republicans to represent them in Congress but voted for the president, President Biden, right? So it would almost certainly be doomed to fail, but we'll come back to that. The person who shot that notion down was none other than James Comer himself. That James Comer. Yes, this guy, James Comer, the, you know, the chairman of the House Oversight Committee, right? The guy who is the, effectively the Grand Inquisitor, the man whose raison d'etre has been to impeach the president. And even he is like, <laughs> this is stupid. This isn't going to work. Let's hear what he has to say on the Fox Propaganda Network of all places. Uh, one last one for you. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene is right now, we believe, meeting with Speaker Johnson. She demands that the Speaker move forward on the impeachment of President Biden. And if he doesn't, if he doesn't get action in a week, she'll trigger a, priv a privileged resolution which would remove the Speaker. Are you on board with this? Well, look, I, Marjorie's a member of the House Oversight Committee. Uh, she and I have a great working relationship. She's a fighter. She's very passionate. Uh, you know, the problem with removing the speaker is the votes aren't there. Now, whether or not people support Mike Johnson or approve of all the decisions Mike Johnson made is, is irrelevant. Uh, they don't want to go through that three-week period again of trying to find someone to come up with 218 votes. So I, I know Marjorie's frustrated. I share her frustration, believe me, every day, uh, because we want to hold people accountable. But at the end of the day, uh, you have to get 218 votes. And uh, that's been a difficult uh, scenario for, for House Republicans. So, uh, look, I, I think that Joe Biden has committed impeachable offenses. I've said that many times. I think his family uh, are corrupt. I think Joe Biden was front and center in these schemes his family was involved in. I would love to hold him accountable. But at the end of the day, when you're in the House of Representatives, it's a matter of getting to 218 votes. Right. And, and right now, it doesn't appear those votes are there. Right. You're not going to look good in November if you mess this up. <laughs> I mean, right, Comer's like, ah, no, you're, they're not going to look good in November if they've messed it up. They've arguably messed it up in spectacular fashion every which way. 
for, I mean, since January 2023, right? This has been the singular political initiative of the House Republican majority, and they have nothing to show for it. Actually, as a matter of fact, as of this recording, they have made criminal referrals for Hunter Biden, President Biden's son, and James Biden, President Biden's brother, for purportedly lying under oath to Congress. We'll see what happens from that. But impeaching the president, their number one priority, they have failed spectacularly. And that's, you, that's why you have James Comer saying, listen, I like Marge. I'm with Marge, but this isn't going to work, right? And when James Comer, who has tilted at more windmills than Don Quixote, right? He has, he has, he has desperately tried everything. When even he says, this is ridiculous, we need to be realistic. That should say something. And that should also say something to the few people out there who still think that this impeachment inquiry has any sort of legitimacy. There's nothing there. James Comer would love to join Marjorie Taylor Greene and impeach the president. It's not going to happen. Somebody who knows it's not going to happen is Jared Moskowitz, uh, James Comer's frenemy, a guy who trolls James Comer every chance he gets. It's always fun to watch. And this is what he had to say in response to the notion of impeachment. Mr. Moskowitz, where are we in a, you know, the impeachment investigation? They started this 11 months ago. Is that still going on? That's the point. It's Comer's going great for Comer. I mean, everything I read, it's just going so well for him. He should just keep doing, keep James, do keep doing what you're doing, James. It's going great. Now, of course, the reason Moskowitz says this is because it's been politically painful for the Republican Party. We've talked about navigator polls and others, which show that the American people are not pleased with the House Republican uh, priorities since they've had the majority, that you know, the American people, by sizable majorities, believe that House Republicans have been more focused on meaningless, political, cynical projects, again, like impeachment, rather than producing meaningful results for their constituents. That happens to be true. And again, it's an election year, right? And for Republicans, this is a major roll of the dice. I mean, sure, President Biden is unpopular, but they the there has been no widespread popular support behind this impeachment effort. They have been repeatedly publicly humiliated on that score. And history has shown that when impeachments fail, they tend to favor the target of the impeachment politically. It even worked for Trump. And there was more support for Trump's impeachments, both of them, than ever has been the case for President Biden. So that's why Jared Moskowitz, despite all of the problems that Democrats face, is relatively confident on this as well he should be. He's trolling James Comer and others as well. So fascinating stuff seeing this like dynamic at play and showing that, you know, people just don't want to let the impeachment thing go. But it sounds like even James Comer just wants to keep it on the back burner. Again, it's almost like um, I use that phrase back burner a lot. It's like he doesn't he doesn't want to take it off the burner. He doesn't want to put it in the fridge. He just wants to keep it on simmer off to the side while he focuses on other things because they're constantly gauging whether or not this could be politically beneficial to them. Now, I said we go back to Marge, and I do want to do that because part of this other like, you know, public comment that she made. She starts to lecture Republicans on legislative stunts or congressional stunts, which aren't going to go anywhere. Right. The same the person who just said that she is going to introduce come hell or high water a motion. We're either going to impeach Joe Biden or we're going to go after Mike Johnson again. One of the two, perhaps both. She then says it's really stupid for Republicans to waste people's time by doing things that will never actually, you know, actualize manifest. Absurd. It's absurd. And Republicans want to be like, oh, we're going to be up here uh, passing our 12 separate appropriation bills that are going nowhere, by the way. They're not going nowhere. Biden already said he's going to veto this one, Milcon. So what a waste of time. It's an absolute waste of time. We should be actually doing something because everybody that voted to send us here wants us to do something. So you see the contradiction? I, and I don't know. I'm, I don't know if she's just stupid or deluded, perhaps both. They're not necessarily mutually exclusive, but she doesn't see the irony there. She is relentlessly pursuing things which stand, which stand no chance. Even if she were to whip enough votes to impeach the president, you only need a simple majority. And technically, if every Republican, including the 18 swing district Republicans who you know, represent Biden districts, if they vote to impeach the president, he will be impeached. You only need a simple majority in the House to bring impeachment. But then to convict and remove him from office, you need a two-thirds supermajority in the Senate, and that's never going to happen. And yet, that's all she cares about. Because when it comes to her cult leader, Donald Trump, 
That's all she can focus on, these meaningless stunts which may please him and just lash out at Democrats, but don't actually produce any material benefit, and certainly not for the, her own constituents. Really weird stuff, funny for her to be called out or shut down in a roundabout way by James Comer, of all people, on Fox News of all places. Fascinating stuff. Let me know what you think in the comments.